Good afternoon, and welcome to this special Friday, November 23rd edition of Westman Newsline. I'm Sarah Francis, alongside Randy Joseph Lilly and Brandon Pretty. In today's news, we'll let you know what was discussed at the city's public budget, budget consultations last night and tell you about a man who has been banned from the town of Russell. And Randy will be in with sports. Randy, I hear there was a debacle in the NFL last night. That's right, Sarah. Tim Tebow was too hurt to play. And the New England Patriots putting an epic beatdown on the Jets. Yeah, that happened. I'll have that and more later on in sports. Thanks, Randy. And Brandon will be in with weather. Brandon, we don't usually get to hear about the weather on Friday. Is it true it will be pretty outside this weekend? Hey, I've never heard that one before in my life. Good work, gold star. You're right, though, and that will be pretty outside this weekend. Currently in the Wheat City, it's minus 14 under a cloudy sky. Winds from the west at 11 kilometers an hour. I'll be back with your full weather details later on in the show. Thanks, Brandon. People have complained a lot recently about con road conditions, affordable housing, and recreational facilities. But while the city was ready to listen to their budget suggestions at New Era School last night, just over 30 people turned up to share their thoughts with the mayor, councillors, and city administrations. Bob Yontis attended the session because his property taxes have gone up 220% in the last five years. He was worried people could lose their homes with such massive increases. Former CFB Shiloh Base Commander Lieutenant John, Colonel John Schneiderbanger was there to ensure council was being responsible with taxpayers' money. One suggestion included Maple Leaf Foods building houses for the workers they bring in. Others thought economic development should be more of a priority and that the city should try to bring in more large employers so more jobs are available. Repairing the 8th Street Bridge is also priority for many people. The city's 2012 operating budget was $70 million, while the utilities budget was $18 million. The next public budget forum will take place December 12th at City Hall. The man who threatened to kill RCMP officers and everyone else in the town of Russell has been ordered to leave town and never return. Albert Dean Crampton was expected to be released from police custody yesterday, but instead, Judge Christy, Christina Tarwood issued a probation order, which she hopes will allow Crampton to address his mental health issues. After being followed by police to a home from which he was banned, police tried to take him into custody. Crampton refused to be arrested and issued the co comments for which he is being charged. Crampton has charged with uttering threats, breaches, and assaulting police officers. One of Assiniboine Community College's own traveled to the World Skills America's competition and came home sporting the gold medal. Brittany Ross, a graduate of ACC's Hotel and Restaurant Management Program, participated in the annual event in Sao Paulo, Brazil last week. Ross, who originally from, who's originally from Ericsson, said being a part of Team Canada was an honor and bringing home the gold medal was icing on the cake. Ross is currently manager of the Lady of the Lake Cafe and Pub. From gold medals to gold stocks now, let's take a look at where your today's money markets are currently sitting. Westman Newsline, produced by the IMA Media Production students of Assiniboine Community College. Local news, weather, and sports on Brandon's only TV newscast, Westman Newsline, airing at 1 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on WCG-TV. Countless people across the United States are getting an early start on their holiday shopping with Black Friday bargains, but some people will get many of their gifts without ever leaving their house. The convenience of, and low costs are making internet shopping even more attractive than ever. And that's posing a problem for some traditional retailers. Dan Simon reports. Online versus brick and mortar. The battle for your holiday dollars perhaps has never been so intense. For years, internet merchants like Amazon had a key advantage in states like California. No sales tax. Local bookstores already under pressure by the rapid rise of e-books and large bookstore chains felt particularly squeezed. Michael Tucker owns a chain of bookstores in San Francisco. If you can save 10%, why wouldn't you? But Amazon's tax advantage recently disappeared in California, adding 7 to nearly 10% to the cost of each order. It also began taxing this year in other states like Pennsylvania and Texas. Online retailers collect tax only for states where they have a physical presence. Now here in California, Amazon is building two giant warehouses including this one near Los Angeles. 
it's a million square feet. And for the old fashioned retailers, it's another reason to worry. Why? Because Amazon's goal is to get items to customers faster and to be able to offer same day delivery. That's right. You can avoid stores if you want and have a package delivered to your house in a matter of hours. <laughs> a win for consumers, but tough for local retailers. If Amazon creates distribution centers and facilities on their turf locally, that takes away the one advantage that we see retailers have left to compete against Amazon. So it is a big deal. Internet analyst Colin Sebastian says that means retailers need to up their game. Retailers need to take a lesson from Amazon. They need to focus on the consumer experience. They need to become more sophisticated both offline and online. Those who want a lesson on how to thrive could learn from Books Inc. in San Francisco. We've had uh, almost everything that comes down the pike that could flatten an industry. Amidst a tidal wave of change in the industry, Michael Tucker's dozen stores are thriving. Everybody can get the books, but the staffs that we have, really, and the readers that we have that are working with the public, that's, that's the difference. That's a different factor. We have tremendous staff that are engaged with those communities. A basic reminder to all retailers, internet and otherwise, that good customer service could be the decisive factor in winning over business. Thank you. Dan Simon, CNN, San Francisco. The truce between Israel and Hamas is holding up. It's been two days since a ceasefire to end eight days of violence in the region. But can this temporary lull in fighting lead to a lasting peace agreement? Martha Shade reports. The celebrations taking place on the streets of Gaza are a far cry from the scenes there earlier this week. Two days after the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas was announced, it's still holding. But Hamas says it's looking for more than just a temporary truce. Our main goal is the end of occupation so our people will be able to, in, to establish their free Palestinian state over the entire Palestine with its Jerusalem as its capital. Hamas, a group the U.S. considers to be a terrorist organization, has long refused to recognize Israel's right to exist. The Obama administration has called for a two-state solution with a Palestinian nation and an Israeli nation living peacefully side by side. But Israel doubts Hamas would ever be willing to compromise. Hamas, unfortunately, is the enemy of peace. Hamas doesn't want to negotiate. Hamas says that any uh, uh, Palestinian who negotiates with Israel is a traitor to the Palestinian cause. The eight days of violence that preceded this latest ceasefire agreement ended with at least six Israelis and more than 160 Palestinians dead. Previous fighting has also resulted in a temporary truce, with the violence starting back up again. It's still unclear how long the current ceasefire will last. I'm Martha Shade, reporting. That's it for news, but stick around. Brandon's up next with Newsline Weather. Good afternoon. With Newsline Weather, I'm Brandon Pretty. After enjoying some nice days, temperatures will be closer to normal for a bit, at least for the weekend. And into the beginning of next week, cooler weather and flurries are going to be hitting us very soon. So be prepared to see some more snow. Currently in Brandon, skies are cloudy and the temperature is sitting at minus 14 degrees. The wind is out at the west at 11 kilometers per hour. This evening, temperatures will dip down to minus 17, and visibility may be a factor with periods of fog. Winds from the southeast at 10 kilometers an hour. There's a 60% chance we'll see some flurries throughout the night, and temperatures will sit at minus 16. Winds will be 15 kilometers from the southeast. Taking a look at our radar image now, there's a 60% chance of flurries, but precipitous cells over the province are sitting closer to Winnipeg and Portage La Prairie which is keeping the Westman free of flurries, at least of right now. Turning to the satellite image, cloud continues to make its way from the west coast, and by the looks of things, will be cloudy for the next little while. Taking a look at the five-day forecast now, as you can see, mostly moderate highs, but, but the lows for a couple days are just a bit chillier than normal. Early next week, we'll be sitting at above 
about average for this time of year. Taking a look around the region this hour, Winnipeg and Portage are in at minus 11, as is Dolphin. Nipawa is in at minus 12 this hour. hour. Carberry sits at minus 13. Minnedosa is minus 14. Verdun is the cold spot with a chilly minus 18 this hour. The seasonal norm for this time of year is a high of minus 4 and a low of minus 14. Record temperatures for this date was a high of 7.2 degrees set back in 1942. The record low was set back in 1985 when the temperatures dipped down to minus 30.2. Once again in Brandon, it's minus 14 degrees with a cloudy sky and winds from the west at 11 kilometers an hour. That's it for weather, but stay tuned. Randy's up next with Newsline Sports. Good afternoon with Newsline Sports. I'm Randy Joseph Lilly. The Flying Hawaiian is the CFL's outstanding player. Chad Owens of the Toronto Argonauts claimed the honor Thursday at the CFL's awards banquet. Calgary Stampeders running back John Cornish was the award finalist in voting conducted by the Football Reporters of Canada and the eight CFL coaches. The 30-year-old Owens was the CFL leader in receiving with 94 catches for 1,328 yards and six touchdowns and return yards, 2,510. He also accumulated a league record 3,863 all-purpose yards. Owens, a native of Hawaii, is a big reason why Toronto is making its first Grey Cup appearance since 2004. The Argos will face Cornish and the Stampeders in the CFL title game Sunday at Rogers Centre. Tom Brady and the New England Patriots put this game and the New York Jets' ugly season away early, but at least it was competitive for a quarter. By halftime, it was a big-time laugher. Brady threw three touchdown passes and ran for a score as the Patriots thoroughly embarrassed the Jets with a 35-point second quarter in a 49-19 victory Thursday night. After a scoreless opening quarter, the Patriots went on a touchdown spree despite holding the ball for only 2 minutes and 14 seconds as they took advantage of several mistakes by Rex Ryan's hapless Jets. Their 35 second quarter points tied for the fourth, fourth most in a quarter in NFL history. Fans were chanting for Team Tebow to play before the second quarter of this Thanksgiving showdown and the booing uh, continued as the team left the Met MetLife Stadium field at halftime. There, there may be a good reasoning why fans at last night's Patriots-Jets game didn't get what they were asking for. Tim Tebow says he broke two ribs in the New York Jets loss at Seattle two weeks ago. Despite the offense struggling and fans chanting for him to replace Mark Sanchez at quarterback throughout the game, Tebow remained on the sidelines due to his injury. He was listed as questionable for the game with a rib ailment, but fully practiced on Wednesday. Tebow says he talked coach Rex Ryan into making him active, leaving third stringer Greg McElroy inactive. Ryan says he would have played Tebow only if it was absolutely necessary. Tebow adds he was hurt on an offensive play against the Seahawks and is unsure how long he will be hindered. And Sarah, that's it for sports. So Randy, it's the 100th Grey Cup this, this weekend and it's Calgary at Toronto. Who, who's your pick to win? Well, I didn't think either one of these teams was going to make it, to be completely honest, so uh, I think it's great that both of them did. However, if I had to make a pick, I will say that the Calgary Stampeders and Kevin Glenn will be victorious in the 100th Grey Cup. That's crazy, isn't it? That is. I'd have to agree with you on that one. I think Calgary will win as well. Definitely. Th thanks, Randy. That's all we have for you today. But be sure to join us again next Tuesday for Brandon's Only TV newscast, Westman Newsline. <laughs>